Hi there and welcome to my channel. I hope you are considering doing a PhD, which is why you are listening to my video. I'll take you through 10 steps for getting your PhD. 10 easy steps if, that if you follow, you will have a PhD and a doctor title next to your name very soon. So far, I have supervised more than 10 PhD students who have completed their PhD in the record time and they are now either employed in industry or in academia. So I want to share some of these steps that you have to follow to get you get your PhD. But before we begin, let me introduce myself. My name is Vidhi Poddar. I'm an associate professor and you're watching a series of talks aimed at understanding the PhD process. I want to help you in your PhD journey and want to make it a memorable one. So if you're ready, let's begin. The first step is admission. Getting an admission to a well-known reputed university is the first step to starting your PhD journey. I have done a separate video where I talk about or where you should be studying, which university you should choose and how and so forth. So make sure that you check out that video as well. Step two is beginning your research. Assuming that you have got the admission and a scholarship to pursue your PhD, the next step is get cracking, get your research, start your, start your research. You have three years time to make this thing happen. In Australia, we, uh, we recommend students to finish their PhD in three years. Uh, sometimes it can go up to four, but preferably stick to three years. And it is doable. I have done it, most of my students have done it, so you can also do it too. So remember that when you start your research, it is easy to get lost. You have to make sure that you follow a proper timeline, make a proper project plan, consider your PhD as a project and just follow that. Make sure that you meet all your deadlines that are set by your university. Different universities have different regulations and policies. For example, the place where I work, we have a milestone system. So we have miles, three milestones. Milestone one is in six months of your enrollment where you propose your research candidacy. That is where you outline what your research is going to be and a panel reviews your application, assesses, uh, listens to your presentation and gives you feedback. That is milestone one. Milestone two is halfway through towards your PhD. So let's imagine 18 months into your PhD is your milestone two. In milestone two, it is, a, it is a time to catch up again with the panel and to, ass, to assess your progress from the time you have uh, completed, uh, you have started your PhD. Uh, we normally ask students to submit a written report, three or four thousand words. If they have published any research papers, they could uh, add that to that report as well. There is a presentation. You do the presentation to the panel members, again get feedback and continue your PhD. And the third milestone is milestone three, which is just before submission of your thesis for examination and uh, defense. So that is the last bit. It is, it is a time to get last uh, feedback for the last time from the committee. Uh, they will look at your presentation, ask your questions, ask, listen to your research findings. And if they feel there is anything that you should substantiate, they can give you feedback and you can incorporate that prior to making your final submission. So that is the first step, that is getting your research done. The third step in your research journey is to consistently publish whatever you research. It is a good habit to have a number of publications, research papers in form of journals or conferences that you uh, publish throughout your journey of PhD within these three years. It is important because it shows that your research is peer reviewed. It is something very important when you submit your thesis for examination. If your thesis goes for examination without any research publications, that is a big risk that you, you would take as a, as, a PhD, uh, as a PhD candidate. Most of the time, my students would have at least five, six, ten publications that go with their thesis. It makes your thesis strong enough and it gives, uh, it gives the reviewers or examiners of your thesis the opportunity to understand that this is something really, uh, this work is really good because a lot of effort has gone into it. It has been published in top journals and conferences. So they also have a belief, they also have confidence in the thesis that they are examining. Most likely you are going to get very, really good comments and feedbacks from the examiners. So make sure that you publish 
as you go and make sure there is also a video that I have done that where I talk about how to publish, what should be your publication strategy. Make sure that you listen to that video as well. The fourth step or the fourth phase in your PhD journey is to participate in conferences, international conferences or national domestic conferences because it gives you an opportunity to connect with researchers in your field. And it is very important because it may be uh, that some research opportunities or collaboration opportunities emerge because of your interaction with a fellow researcher at a conference. Uh, conferences are also good because you might meet some people or senior uh, researchers or academics within the field with whom you might work after your PhD. So it is a good, good idea to go and network at a conference and understand what others are doing, learn from them. Not, not only that, keep, make this as an opportunity to uh, build up rapport with researchers in your field with who may, may even be, become your reviewers uh, for potential job applications in the future. I have also made a video where I talk about how to network at a conference, how to get the best out of attending a conference. Please make sure that you listen to that video as well because there's a lot of preparation that goes behind the scenes before you actually attend a conference. And, the, and when you are at a conference, you have to make sure that you get most out of the conference. And how to do that? Listen to my video for the, for the, for the tips and tricks uh, for attending a conference. Step five. Step five is writing your thesis. Most of the students would write, begin writing their thesis in the last year, which is the third year or so. However, I strongly recommend that you write your thesis or start writing the thesis as you progress with your PhD. Uh, it is a very uh, daunting task to complete the PhD thesis in the last year, but if you are writing regularly, it makes the job much easier. Like I said before, most of my students would publish their research papers as they are progressing through their PhD. So having those papers ready, they can easily get go into your thesis and help you build up your thesis fairly quickly. If you haven't published uh, so far or if you are at a stage that you are in the third year of your PhD and listening to my video, I would, I would suggest start writing now because it is a fairly extensive exercise to get your thesis ready for submission. There will be multiple drafts that you have to work on and, and so on. I have also done a complete video on how to write your PhD thesis. Make sure that you check that out too. The next step is PhD defense. This is a step, this is a step where you are given the opportunity to present your research and your research findings to a panel or a committee. You will do a presentation and the panel members would question you, ask you different uh, questions about your findings and it is an opportunity for you to uh, defend what you have done. Step 7 is submitting your thesis for examination. Normally, your supervisor would identify a couple of examiners who would review your thesis. You do not know who the examiners are going to be. The thesis, you would submit your thesis to your research office and they would arrange for that thesis to be examined uh, by, the, uh, by the examiners that the supervisor has appointed. So that is the next phase of next step of your, of your, of your thesis. Step eight is addressing examiners comments. It may take up to six or eight weeks for examiners to come back to you with their review on your thesis. Once you review, once you receive this review, you have to uh, look at all individual uh, feedback that the reviewers have given and try to accommodate all the reviews that you can. In, in some instances, it may be possible, it may, may happen that you do not agree with the feedback that the reviewer has provided, in which case you should discuss that with your supervisor and decide on a strategy on how you're going to address that aspect. I have done a, a separate video on this topic, so make sure that you check that as well. The next step is final submission of your thesis. In this step, what you do is you have already addressed the reviewer's comments, you have revised your thesis, you got it approved from your supervisor. You then go and print your thesis, bind it as per the university requirements and submit it to the research office. The next step after that is waiting for your graduation. And once the graduation happens, you can officially call yourself a doctor. So those are my uh, tips or 10 steps for completing your PhD, starting from admission to graduation. I hope you start your PhD journey soon 
And if there is anything I can do to help you in your PhD journey, please feel free to message me or leave questions uh, on this or comments at the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching this video. I greatly appreciate it. If you have learned anything from this video, please, please, please hit the like button and share it with anyone you think would benefit from this video as well. If you haven't done already, please hit the subscribe button and the bell, bell icon so that you could be kept informed of any new videos that I do which would help you in your PhD journey. Thank you once again and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.